Well, it's been a while since I did a how-to video. Um, <laughs> got this great question uh, from Fran uh, about how to play Fireball Mail. Um, this is one of those uh, bluegrassy kind of songs. I think there's a dozen how to play videos out there uh, for this one, uh, but it's also play played a hundred different ways, so I, I guess there's room for more. Um, I'm not gonna teach you how to play it per se, I'm, I'm gonna teach you how to fake it. And my hope here is that you kind of apply this approach to every song. Um, I think uh, when we look at the tab literature or the, or the notes, um, those notes are capturing the way a particular musician played it. So if that musician had a propensity for doing rolls or, or a certain kind of riff or an arpeggio, well, they, they captured it. And, and, and when you look at the, the notes, it's, it's capturing style added on top of the melody. Um, the style is usually to fill in the notes between the melody. Um, but a lot of times I think, uh, people see that and go, well, that's the way the song is played. We got to play it that way. And, well, if you if you go onto YouTube and and you look up the videos of the song, you'll you'll realize nobody's playing it the same way. Uh, some people play it in open G, some people play it in A. Um, you know, it's the key here is to make sure everybody in the band is playing the right in the right key and playing on the right chords. Um, outside of that, uh, just have fun. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how. How I fake it. Um, I only first started playing the song a couple couple nights ago uh, when I was asked the question. Um, it, it's really a song very similar to many, 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 many bluegrass songs. So if you can play this, you can probably play uh, and jam with musicians on hundreds of songs like this. Um, there's going to be a certain group of bluegrass players who are very regiment and and want it to be played exactly the the, the way it is and uh and that's fine um that's not the kind of musician i like to jam with i i like to play with musicians you know from all genres uh rock and punk and folk and hill you know hillbilly whatever have it all kind of crammed together and usually someone says hey what key is it in oh it's g for jesus and and then we just go from there and make sure that when there's a change to to see, we all just kind of ch make sure we change it at the same time, and, and if we miss it, we just kind of fake it, and we get there. Um, and that is a whole lot more fun, and we end up playing a whole lot more more songs. So, um, I printed out the lyrics, because that's something you want to do. I bet if you did a search, you'll find also a dozen different versions of the lyrics. Um, I think the version Fran was singing is uh, a little bit different, and that's that's such a cool thing about folk music, and that's what this is, it's folk, folk music. This is the kind of music that evolves, uh, you know, I'm gonna play it a little bit wrong, and then you're gonna take it, and you're gonna play it a little bit wrong, and by the time it gets to that third person, it's gonna be a new song, and that's just, that's so cool, that's the human experience. Um, that's what drove, drove me to folk music in the first place. So, um, all right. So, um, all I knew is it was in the key of G. Um, I listened to the song and I could hear that there were some chord changes, so I just kind of listened for them. Um, being a bluegrass song, it's, odds are really good it's one four five. And what I mean by that, if it's in the key of G, you got um, well, you got a uh, G is is your first chord. Four would be um, I believe C, and D would be your fifth chord. So the idea is, you know, G A B C would be your fourth chord. D would be your fifth chord, one, four, five, the Nashville chords or whatever. Um, you do that, it, it works pretty much for half of every bluegrass song out there. Um, so next step is to find the rhythm, right? So I, I, I think the bluegrass folks tend to play a little more, a little faster. The folk folk play a little slower. And uh, so um, I'll just kind of go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna riff off the first verse a little bit and uh, I'll just keep playing it over and show you how I build it up. One, two. Here she comes, look at her roll. There she goes, eating that coal. Watch her fly, hugging the rails. Let her buy, buy, buy its fireball mail. So let's let's just start assuming it's G. And um, if you watched any of my older older videos on basic frailing strum or there's a there's a million banjo musicians out there who also will show the basic frailing strum. It's just a kind of a foundational way to 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 get some basic rhythm going. 
So when I say basic frailing strum, that's kind of what I mean. And that's kind of a one and a two and a one and a two and a one and a two. It's actually one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. Here she comes, look at her roll, there she goes, eating that coal, watch her fly, hugging the rails, let her buy, buy, buy its fireball mail. So already you can tell, I stayed in G the whole time, but the lyrics kind of, the melody and the lyrics are kind of begging for us to make a change. So let's go. Here she comes, look at her roll, there she goes, eating that coal. So I went to the D, it just kind of seems to pull there. I could try it with a C, eating that coal, nah, that didn't feel right, D, coal. And then, <clears throat> watch her fly, hugging the rails. Let her buy, buy, buy its fireball mail. And that's all I did is I, I just kind of followed the melody and every time it felt like there was a change from the, the vocal melody, I tried the different chords and I, I limited myself to the one, four, five, the, the G, the C, and the D until I figured out the chords that just kind of work. So, so I'm just going G, G, G. G, G, D, G, G, C, G, D, G. All right, now I'll add the words. Here she comes, look at her roll. There she goes, eating that coal. Watch her fly, hugging the rails. Let her buy, buy, buy its fireball mail. I'm gonna stop there for a moment. If um, if you hear that and you really like that and you say that's all I ever wanted to do, awesome. We're we're good here. Just practice that a hundred times. Um, you're ready to join a band. Go find some guitar players, a mandolin player, and and have fun. Um, trust me, they're gonna be begging to find some people who want to sing. Um, so sing, do your basic frailing strum, you're good to go, call it a day. But you probably want to know how to add a little little something something to it so it sounds like you're you're doing that melody. Um, you know, can we do some of the melody that we're doing vocally on the banjo? Um, here's what I came up with, and I think if you get a hundred different banjo players doing this exercise, you're gonna get a hundred different versions. And and that's totally cool. Um see me kind of out of the corner of my eye peeking at those lyrics and I'm kind of messing myself up I tell you what it's okay don't stop if you make a mistake just keep powering through most of the time um, people aren't gonna know I posted a version of this song uh, the other day and um, it's got so many mistakes and uh, but I, I got a pretty favorable response people dug on it people seem to really dig more on the rhythm than anything so as long as you stay in the right key and you change your chords in the right way, nobody's really gonna notice those melodies. Uh, the, the notes between those quarter notes, the, uh, that's, it's almost filler, it's almost more rhythm than it is melody. Um, it, it gives it texture. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show a couple variations of, of how I can play this and maybe it'll give you ideas. 
Um, again, if you watch some of my other videos, I've talked about the dynamics that you can use to spruce up the chords. Those dynamics include hammer-ons. So you got your basic frailings, hammer-on. Do pull-offs. Do slides. Put it all together, you can just kind of mix it up. <laughs> also, there, there's kind of a fourth dynamic that I do on a, a lot, and I've talked a lot about it, and that's the drop thumb. And it's all the drop thumb is is a way to to be able to hit a note on an open chord um, that's a little offbeat. Um, it, it's useful. I wouldn't get too obsessed with it. It, it is kind of hard and it takes muscle memory. Um, I recently had surgery on my thumb, so my, my drop thumb's a little weak, but it, it's coming back. Um, but uh, no matter what string you hit, as long as you're in the right key, it don't matter. So if you're doing drop thumb, if you accidentally hit the wrong string, it's fine. Uh, whether you do hammer-ons or slides or pull-offs or drop thumb or a little bit of everything, um, it's it's all just flavor. So I'm, I'm going to try it a couple more times. Hopefully you can kind of hear how it's very different, like that little bit where I did the, the double thumbing. Right? It's the same as doing a slide. It doesn't matter how you get to those notes, it's as long as you get to those notes. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's all flavoring. So. Um, you know, th this is one of those things. You, you've already been working on your claw hammer banjo, your, your frailing strum. Rhythm is the most important thing. Second most important thing is staying in the key, making sure you're playing the right chords. And then you start sprinkling that, that goodness. Um, and uh, now you might say, ah, Steve, I really want to play those exact notes, though, that you're singing. Well, that takes practice. Feel it out. Try it, Trial and error is the best way to learn. And on the way, you're going to get good at the other ways. You know, you're, you're going to take many journeys on the same song. Here's me trying to, to get that exact melody. Melody. I notice sometimes I play the D and sometimes I play the D7. Um, both actually work just fine. D, D just gives you access to other hammer-ons. There you go. Um, so don't forget about your phantom hammer-ons. Those are neat. So you do a... Um, what is it? Uh, That's where you strike the different string than you hammer on with. Right? So. Here's a game. Can you spot the number of mistakes I just made? <laughs> Tr 
truth is it don't matter. Just keep playing it over and over until it becomes a reflex. And after a while, you're going to land on something you're very comfortable with, and then that's your version of the song. Then play it another hundred times and get really good at it, and then go share it with somebody. Post a video on, on YouTube. Send me, send me a link. I, I'd love to see you playing it. Here she comes, look at her roll, there she goes, eating that coal, watch her fly, hugging the rails, let her buy, buy, buy its fireball mail, let her go, look at her steam, hear her blow, <laughs> whistle and scream, like a hound. Wagging his tail, Dallas bound, 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 it's fireball man. Watch her swerve, look at her sway. Get that curve out of the way Watch her fly, look at her sail Let her buy, 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 fireball man Let her buy, 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 fireball man All right, I, I hope that hot mess of a lesson uh, helps somebody. Um, if you've been following me, it probably all ties together. Um, every day I get an email or a, a message or a comment from somebody and you're all just saying such wonderful things. I might have a bad day here or there and, and I get a message from you all and it cheers me up and I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, I, w I wish I had more things to teach. I, I feel like I kind of play a basic style of banjo and, and I've shared how I kind of fake it to get there. I post a lot of songs that are kind of non-typical for banjo, a lot of pop music or uh, alternative music. Um, and my goal there is to show how you can take just a really basic claw hammer style and, and apply it to any kind of music that you like. So uh, once again, thank you so much for, for being such a positive influence on me. Um, so anyway, uh, take care.